This video is going to cover creating an infinite scroll for our chat room uh, that has to take in a couple considerations. So the first one obviously is as you scroll up, it needs to be able to load in more messages. Uh, the other part of that is when you load more messages like you just saw there, it needs to scroll back down to roughly the same spot where it was previously. Uh, the other thing it needs to do is it still needs to send us to the bottom uh, for a new message that's sent. So if I say, hey, John, uh, I expect this chat over here to scroll down to show this new message. So you can see it did that. It scrolled this one over here down too. But if John is scrolled up because he's looking at past messages and I send him a message, let us let me scroll down like halfway. And I say, hey, John, uh, just interrupting you. This one shouldn't scroll John back down because we don't want him to constantly get sent back down if his friend is spamming him in the chat. So we, we need to be a little bit careful on how we do these thresholds for the uh, for this auto scroll down. We need to handle scrolling down to where we were previously when we scroll up. Uh, and of course, we need to actually do the, the vertical scrolling uh, as well. So there's a couple different nuances to this. I think I have a system that mostly works for this. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's jump into it. So the first thing we're going to want to do, if I bump up the size here, is we're going to want to do a bundle add, and we're going to add pagey, which is P-A-G-Y, as you can see here. Uh, and this is going to be for our pagination. So the first step is going to be uh, you want a pagination gem that can take the uh, overall collection of items. So in this case, we have like the rooms controller, right? And in here we grab at messages, which is just all of the messages in the room. What we want is we want a, uh, a means of taking all of these messages and breaking them up into like groups. So you want, uh, let's say the first 10 messages, for example, to be uh, displayed. And then every subsequent 10 messages needs to be another page in your parameters up here. So that's what we're gonna be using pagey for. Uh, that might not be how it's pronounced, but that's just what I call it. Uh, so the first step for installing pagey is to do the back end, which is actually just as easy as saying include uh, capital P A G Y colon colon back end. Then we're just going to copy this and we're going to we're gonna come down to the helpers and the application helper. And in here we want to change the back end to front end. And that takes care of the actual pagey stuff as far as the, uh, the helpers are concerned. So once we do that, uh, we need to come into, let's say our rooms controller. And in our rooms controller where we have this show, I'm gonna full screen this, uh, we wanna take these messages and we'll just get rid of these for now. And instead what we wanna do is we want to grab the uh, messages from the room in the same way we were doing previously, but we're gonna save it into a variable that we just call pagey messages. Now, if you look at the GitHub page for pagey, uh, the way that it works is you create two variables or you get two variables when you call pagey. Uh, the first one's gonna be your pagination and the second one's just gonna be the messages that you're gonna display on the screen. So you're gonna have your like pagey for your overall pages of let's say you have 100 items, you're gonna have those five pages and then you're gonna have your first 20 messages. And because of how we're grabbing these, because we're grabbing the uh, single room messages and we're ordering them in descending order. We're going to have the 20 most recent messages returned into this messages list right here. But with how that works, because we're going to be adding, you know, like message one, message two, we actually need these uh, 20 items to be reversed. We can't reverse the whole collection because then we would have the 20 oldest items uh, and then it would go from like message 100, 99, 98. So we actually need to take this again and just call messages dot reverse. And we're going to store that in our at messages. We can take this and we can put the same concept into our users controller where we have the messages. So we just get rid of this, enter it down and we do the exact same thing. And that's because we have the different collection for the users as opposed to the like the chat rooms. Uh, let me actually go ahead and start the server real quick and refresh. 
So that's going to handle uh, grabbing the items. And if I change this real quick, let's say I make this five items, we'll see uh, when these changes start to take effect. So here we have one item, two items, three, four, and five. So you can already tell that we're limiting this just by changing this number. Uh, but we currently don't have any way to grab like page two, three, or four. So what I'll do is I'll change this back to 20 for now. And we can move on to the uh, application controller. So in the application controller, one thing that we want to add uh, because of how we're doing this, and uh, oops, uh, there's actually an article that I used for this. I think this was the Colby uh, pagination article. So this article is incredibly detailed. It's what a large portion of this uh, video is based on. So I'll have a link to this in the video description. Go check out the article because it does help the, the author to have that exposure. Um, but essentially what we need to do is we need a dedicated uh, turbo frame for this, uh, for this setup. And the way that we can do that is we can create a before action that we call turbo frame request variant. And then down here, we can just check uh, whenever we have a, uh, a request, we just check if the variant is a turbo frame. And if it is, what you can actually do is create a uh, custom page in the views, the rooms, I think in here, I created a new file and I call this file, uh, what is it like index.html plus turbo underscore frame dot ERB. And what, what we can do in here is we can uh, do our turbo stream actions inside of this dedicated file. So we'll come back to this in a second. I just wanted to set up the actual application controller first. But what we want to do is we want to come into our index page and scroll down. And I think what we did is and we basically want to come into this turbo stream from tag. We have the messages uh, div right here. Then we want to grab a turbo turbo frame tag, and we're going to call this page handler. Then we want to render our messages, but we don't want to render at messages. We actually want to render messages slash pager, which is a partial we haven't created yet. And we're going to pass in the pagey uh, setup that we had earlier. After we do that, we then want to create or to render the messages. And we're going to render the messages inside of a div with the ID of messages container. And that's just because of how we're going to be grabbing things. But we need to create this actual pager. And this is going to be our pagination link. So uh, let me come over to messages. We'll create a new file. We'll say underscore pager.html.erb. And in here, we want to create a div with an ID of pager and a class of text center. And we'll close the div. We then want to check if pagey has a next. And if you're interested in just doing a basic pagination, uh, you can also check if pagey has a previous link. It's just dot previous. So this is just checking if like you have your page one, two, three, four, five. This is just checking if there's a link that says pagey dot next. So if we do have a next link, that means that there are more pages that we can load. In that case, we want to create a link to and I'll come down here and I'll close this. And we want our link to to have a URL for. And uh, now what I did originally was I actually had this as I think room path. Uh, and I was passing in the page, which is pagey.next. The issue with this is we're not only working in the rooms controller like we established earlier, we also have the users controller. And by using the URL for instead, URL for, uh, this works for both because it's just going to grab the current URL uh, and it's going to uh, use the pagey.next and pass it in as a parameter. So that was sort of how I worked around that, that issue of, of multiple paths. Uh, the next thing I did was I gave it a basic bootstrap class just so it looks a bit better. And then we add some data because of course we're going to be using stimulus for this. Uh, and we also need to have the uh, turbo frame. So we're going to say turbo frame colon and this is going to be page handler. So as you can guess, this page handler inside of our index is this turbo frame tag. So when we click it, we're going to be uh, using the turbo frame tag. And that's sort of how we're, we're feeding the data back and forth. Uh, and then for the controller, we have a controller called auto click. 
So the auto click controller here, let me just move this up and space it out, make sure that my code looks good. Uh, the auto click controller is gonna be a stimulus controller. So let me uh, open up my console here. I'll move this up real quick and bump up the font size. And what we wanna do in here is we wanna call Rails G Stimulus. Uh, and this is gonna allow us to generate a controller. And we're just gonna call this auto click. And we'll go ahead and we'll run that. The other thing that we want to do is we want to run a bin import map. Uh, we wanna pin stimulus dash use. Now stimulus use, you can find it by Googling it. Uh, it builds on the observer APIs. And uh, it, if, you use, if you use the use intersection, it allows you to check when a button appears on the screen. So let's say like this button up here, this NPM button, when you scroll over it, it'll fire the appear event. And when you, when you scroll away from it, it'll fire the disappear event. So if you actually click on use intersection, I think it gives you the entire documentation for it. You can include a threshold for how much of the button needs to be visible before it, it needs, before it gets clicked. Uh, and then it gives you an example of the code that you'll use for it. So in this case, it has the connect, appear, and disappear. So what you can actually do is just grab all of this and we can come over here and I'll just move this into my tab and open up my other VS code. Uh, and then I'll actually bump the font size down one more so I can actually read what I'm doing. But if we come into our JavaScript controller, our JavaScript controller, and we find our auto click controller, we can grab all of this and we can paste in what the, uh, what the documentation suggested. Now there's a little bit here because this is sort of confusing to set up. Uh, one of the issues is as the items get loaded in, it seems to call connect multiple times. So I ended up having to create some static variables to work through that. Uh, but I, I have a system that largely works, uh, credit to, to GitHub Copilot of all things because it auto-generated the code. But we can come in here and we can say static messages container, we do a static top message, which probably doesn't need to be static, but I'm in too deep at this point. Uh, and then we can do a static throttling equals false. So we have our use intersection. I'm going to add in a console log here that just says connected to auto click, which is just the name of this controller. On up here, what we need to do is we need to have an if statement that just says if autoclick.throttling is false. So if we are not currently throttling, the first thing we want to do is start throttling. And by using the autoclick here, the way that I'm using it, I have to change the class name. So we're going to give this a specific class name and we're going to reference it. I don't know if there's another way to do this, uh, but this allows us to use these static variables just by the class name like you would in any other language. So we can call autoclick.throttling, we can set it to true. And now regardless of how many times this gets called, this should still be uh, true. The next thing we want to do is we want to grab the element. So we're going to say autoclick.messages container is equal to get element messages container. Remember in our index page, the messages container is the wrapper around all of our messages. So we grab all of the messages we grab the container of those and then we grab the top message from that container. We do that by saying uh, the message is container, children, and we grab the first element in it or the zeroth element. Once that's done, we then call autoclick.throttle. We pass in this.element.click, which is going to be our pager uh, button that we created over here, this link to and we throttle it and make sure that it only runs for uh, once per 300 milliseconds. So this is your time in milliseconds. This does mean we need this uh, throttle method down here. So we come down here, I'll add in the comment for the throttle, and then it already starts suggesting what the code needs to be. Thankfully, we have GitHub Copilot. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to create a timeout and a previous. We set the timeout to null, the previous to zero. We then create a later function, which is the actual function that gets called. So we pass in the uh, element.click function. That's our func. So when we eventually call this, 
we call funk at the end here and we reset the timer. Before we call it, we actually have another function down here. Let me just hit enter and then come down here and close this off. So inside of this function, we create a variable. We call it now. And actually, as I'm coming through here, I'm going to change these vars to let's uh, just because this is a little bit older code. And we can uh, create another one. We'll call this the remaining time, which is equal to wait minus now minus the previous. And then we check if the remaining is less than or equal to zero or if the remaining is greater than wait. So if the remaining is less than or equal to zero, it stands to reason that we haven't called throttle yet. So in that case, we just want to clear the timeout. We then want to call the later function. So if it's zero or less than zero, it means, hey, just fire this, right? We don't need any fancy logic, just make sure it fires. So we call later. Later resets these two variables, and then it calls our on click. Uh, if the remaining time is greater than the wait, we do the same thing. We clear the timeout, we call later, later calls the on click function. If those two aren't the case, then what we want to do is we want the timeout equal to set timeout for later and the remaining time. So this is just uh, in the event where you you scroll up and it, it fires the on click multiple times. We're just making sure that it only fires this function once and it fires the first instance of it occurring and then it sets a timeout for 300 milliseconds in this case. So that's sort of how we're doing this, this throttling. It's not really a fancy function. It's just something that I got off Stack Overflow. Uh, but it's it's common functionality. You, you frequently have to like do these, these throttling functions. Uh, the next thing we do after that, as GitHub Copilot is suggesting, is set a timeout function. Now, it's not entirely correct here, but what we can do is there is a function built into JavaScript where if you grab a, a element, so in this case, the top message is a div, you can call scroll into view with that div, and then you can pass it an object. In this case, the uh, behavior, I set it to auto. Uh, the other one I think is smooth, which is just a smooth scroll up to or down to wherever your messages are. Auto is just a hard snap, I think. Uh, and then you have options here for like what you want the uh, position to be, I think. So you have like start, center, or end. Uh, and I think I put it at the end of the element just so that it scrolls to the bottom of the element uh, because that's the furthest point that I could go to. And by doing this, whenever we, uh, after we throttle the function, we call this function, we then have uh, the auto scroll happen. And then after we have the auto scroll happen, uh, we set the throttling to false. And then down here, we do a comma and I set this to run uh, after 250 milliseconds. So this runs at a slightly lower time than the 300 over here. Uh, and it looks like something's unhappy here. So the basic idea here is uh, if we're not currently throttling, we set it to throttle. And then if I call this again, we're, we're throttling. So just get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. Uh, in the event you get through here, which I think it does, I don't think this logic is perfect. Uh, we then have the throttle function, which also makes sure that things only run once. Uh, and then after we, we execute the function, we then have a timeout that sort of waits for the items to populate. And then afterwards, it scrolls to the previous top element in the list of elements. Now, one thing we have to fix from the previous episode uh, is if I open this up, because we added these fancy attachments in the previous episode, and you're, you're free to go uh, see how we did that. Uh, by watching the previous episode, but these block your ability to scroll. Uh, and it's because this element right here, the attachment previews is, uh, it, it appears by default. So even with no elements here, like if I cancel these, uh, we still have that empty div here. So we need to fix that. And the way that I fix that is in the message preview controller. Uh, what is it? inside preview at the bottom here? I called a function that I named toggle visibility. 
and toggle visibility is just a function that I create down here uh, that grabs the message or that grabs the attachment previews div, which is the one we just looked at, and it toggles a class on it that says uh, display dash none. So that class is, we actually need to add real quick. So we want to come over to our views layouts new message form. We have our attachment previews ID here. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to just add a class of d-none. And this toggle method here will just, uh, because it's none right now, we click the button, it calls preview, and then it sets this, it toggles the class. Because it had none, now it doesn't have it, which means it's visible. Uh, and then you click it again, and uh, it goes uh, invisible, I think is how that works. I just noticed a bug with this code. Uh, so what we're actually going to do here is we're going to create a uh, this toggle visibility function. The toggle visibility function is going to have the, uh, it's going to grab the preview and it's going to get the uh, attachment previews element. And then it's going to do the class list.toggle like I had previously. Uh, but the other thing that I change here is down at the bottom in the remove preview, I check if the file arrays.length is uh, equal to zero. If it is, I call toggle visibility. I do the same thing up here with the toggle visibility call at the end. Uh, but then I also, when we clear the preview, I grab the preview element by ID, and then I uh, just do a class list.add for display dash none. And this one doesn't toggle it, because if I like send a message, I always want that to get rid of this element. Uh, and this allows us to forcibly hide the attachment previews unless we're actually adding new elements uh, up in here. And then it only gets rid of this invisible div here uh, after I exit out of all of these. And now it's back to hidden. So that takes care of that issue. Now, the other thing that I change in here is inside of the scroll controller. So in the scroll controller, I create a on initialize, which is uh, with stimulus by default. And I call this dot reset scroll without threshold. I get rid of this uh, reset scroll call here on connect. And I create this uh, reset scroll without threshold function, which is what the old reset scroll did. For the actual reset scroll, because we have this event listener that uh, calls this whenever a message is added to the chat, we don't want it called when we're scrolled up near the top, like we covered at the beginning. So what we do is inside of this reset scroll, we call a const bottom of scroll, or we, we assign a variable bottom of scroll, and we assign it to messages.scroll height minus messages.client height. So that's sort of how far from the bottom we are in our scroll bar. We then create a threshold, and this threshold is effectively how many pixels from the bottom I'm allowed to be before a message causes me to no, or before messages stop snapping me down to the bottom. So if I'm below 500 pixels from the bottom here in the scroll bar, it'll send me to the bottom whenever someone messages me. So we then, uh, or what I do is I create a comment. I say scroll down if we're not within the threshold. And you can see here GitHub Copilot already knows what to do. So if we're, uh, if we're not within that threshold, we then, or if we are within that threshold, we then uh, call this dot reset scroll without threshold. So um, you could probably name this something better. Uh, in my case, I just had this code in both locations, but I think Copilot has a better idea here of what to do. So if we refresh now, I actually don't think that this chat has 20 messages in it, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, the other thing you might want to look into is uh, causing having multiple videos and stuff, it seems to have a bit of a delay. So you might need to delay the initial uh, reset uh, for those things to pop in. But we now have that working. Uh, we just don't have enough messages here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I'm gonna come over to our controller, uh, our rooms controller, and I'm gonna switch this down to five, or maybe I'll switch this down to 10. Uh, and then in our users controller, I'll do the same thing. I'll switch this down to 10 just for the sake of testing. And then I'm gonna do like one, 
two, three. I actually need to refresh because I broke everything. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that just gives us a bunch, a bunch of messages. So I just realized that by calling this reset scroll function for some reason, and I might be too tired because it's two in the morning, uh, but for some reason that causes this to not work. So I've instead just added the same code here uh, a second time, and now it's scrolling me down to the bottom. But okay, I've added a whole bunch of messages here. It's just spamming the chat. You can see up here, this is actually uh, text right here. So let's come over to our pager. Oh, and this is why we need to actually add text to this link. So I just said load more messages. And then we do a comma. I refresh. Now we have the load more messages button here. So if I click this, nothing will happen, uh, at least as far as we can tell. And the reason why is we don't have the uh, turbo file that we made earlier, this turbo index uh, set up yet. So inside of this, what we do is we create a turbo frame tag and we do this for the page handler. And then we say do, and then we come down to the bottom and we do an end. And remember this page handler inside of our index is this turbo frame tag right here. So we, uh, we work with this turbo frame tag of page handler and we say uh, turbo underscore stream, underscore action, underscore tag. And then in here, we want to do a prepend. You can also do an append. An append would put it at the bottom of the chat. We want to prepend, so at the top of the chat. We want to prepend the target, which is a messages container, which is that div we created right here. So it's gonna prepend these messages at the start of this container. So uh, new messages go here, right? So we throw all of those at the beginning and then we have all of our old messages at the end. And then uh, we need to send a template and this template is gonna be, uh, if I do it like this, it's going to be a render call for at messages. So this will, uh, render all of our messages for this specific page that we uh, clicked on in our pager. When we click pagey.next, it's going to render that specific page into this template, which is gonna have like messages 11 through 20, for example. The other thing we need to then do is a turbo actions tag. Uh, and this is gonna be replace because we now need to replace the pager uh, because it's now not supposed to load page two because we've loaded messages 11 through 20. We now want to load page three, right? So we want to say uh, the target is the pager and the template is going to be a render for, I called it messages slash pager, and we pass in the pagey pager. Of course, it would probably help if I spelled this correctly. So I'm going to pass in pagey instead of pager. Uh, benefits of not sleeping enough. And now if I scroll up and I click on this, you can see it loads in the additional messages. So that's at least working in terms of the infinite scroll. The other thing is it looks like this decided to use stimulus instead of hot wired stimulus, which is why our auto click con uh, controller isn't working. So I'm gonna switch over to hot wired stimulus, which comes with Rails 7 by default. Now if I scroll up a bit, uh, we should be good. It looks like it scrolled us down to the location that we were expecting to go to. So now let me just open up another window and make sure that this works if I try to send a message to myself. Log in as john at doe.com with a password of password. Uh, I'm currently scrolled all the way down over here. So let me just say, hey, Dean. So that scrolls me down. Let me now scroll up a little bit. Say, hey, pay attention to me. And that moved the scroll bar up a little bit because it added the message, but it didn't scroll me down. But that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, if you have any other suggestions or things you'd like to see in the chat room, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'm sort of starting to run out of ideas here uh, in terms of what a, a chat room would still need aside from these features.
Uh, but if you have any ideas, feel free to leave them down below. If you're interested in how to create a mobile application with Rails, I have a video that covers that exact topic on the screen right now.